Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to do a walkthrough of how to edit a citation from a citation generator to fix some of the common mistakes that citation generators tend to make. Um, for some reason the robots have not yet taken over this little area of the world completely for us. So we, you do have to edit your citations after you get them from a citation generator. Um, the first thing that I recommend is to, if possible, get your citation from the library's main search box. I think that citation generator tends to be um, more accurate. There tend to be fewer really big mistakes. Even if you, even if you got your uh, source from one of the library's other databases, most of the time it will show up in the library's main search and you can get a citation from here. So here's my article. If I click the title to get more details, under Send To, the Citation button will give me a citation. It'll give it to me in MLA, APA, or Chicago. For this class we want APA, so we'll make sure we select that. And we want to just copy this and paste it into a Word document. That's going to be our references page. i um, going to go ahead and put references up at the top centered. Um, it's gone ahead and added an extra space, which is a little weird. Actually, a couple extra spaces. And we've lost some things when we copied and pasted. Um, I always like to kind of compare side by side what we copied from and what we ended up with. Um, it had the hanging indent and it had double space and it had some uh, things italicized. It had the title of the journal italicized and the volume number um, of the journal where this article appeared. We've lost all of that so we need to get it back. Um, first thing, highlight all of this, go to paragraph. Um, where exactly you find this will vary based on your version of Word, but it's always under Paragraph. Under Indentation Special, you want Hanging. And under Line Spacing, you just want to click Double. And click OK. So we've gotten the Hanging Indent back. Um, it's kind of the opposite of a normal paragraph. And we've also gotten the Double Spacing back. Um, next thing we need to do is find the title of the journal and the volume number and we want to make sure that is italicized again. So now we fixed all the things that we lost when we copied and pasted. So our next step should be to find some kind of template or example that we can follow to make sure that we're not missing anything else. I don't keep too many of the rules to APA in my head at all times because there are a lot of rules and I wouldn't have room in my head for anything else. So I just rely on a really good template. The MVCC Writing Center has one that is very user friendly. You can get to it from the libraries page under Writing and Citation Help, Citing Sources, APA, and we want the Citation Guide. First off, uh, let's just look at kind of the overview of reference page entries. That's on page 18. And let's just kind of look at the basic template. Uh, we've got the author's last names first, uh, last name, comma, initials. We have that going on. One thing that some of the citation generators, particularly it seems like Gale database citation generator, um, tends to include any kind of degrees or credentials that are listed in the article for each author. So if authors have a PhD or an MD or an MSW or some other initials after their name that are not actually part of their name, those tend to get included sometimes. That didn't happen here fortunately, but if it did you want to delete those you don't want any of those extra credentials. You just want last name, comma, first initial, period. Um, then you want just the year of publication in parentheses with a period afterwards, and we have that. 
the, the next thing in order is the title of the article. This article, it's supposed to be in sentence case, which means you capitalize the first letter and any proper nouns and nothing else. And you can see in our article, actually we have the title of the article is in um, title case, where almost every word is capitalized. So we need to go and fix that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see in the example as well, and if you read through all of the, the details, anything, the first word after a colon in a title is also capitalized um, because it's kind of like a, a second sentence. So I'll leave the A capitalized. Um, and then we have the title of the journal. It's italicized, just like the example as is the, um, then there's a comma and the volume number in italics and then not in italics but immediately after in parentheses the issue number, comma, any page numbers, period. And then after that we have the DOI, if there is one. There isn't always one. Um, so if there isn't one but you do have a, a link, give the, the URL or the link it says to not end this with a period. So that's a pretty good start just from the kind of basic overview template. Next thing I want to check is um, we've got a whole lot of authors here. I don't know specifics but I know that the rules for having multiple author authors um, can be a little bit different than if you just have one. So I just want to double check that. Scroll down to the next page. I have between 3 and 20 authors. So let's see, last name and initials, separate names with commas, and place an ampersand, this uh, squiggly symbol, before the final name. And we have all of that perfectly, including the ampersand right here. So authors were good. The next thing I want to do is, um, I know this is an academic journal article. JAMA is an academic journal. Um, so I want to just see if there are any special rules for academic journal articles that I might need to know. One thing I noticed, the DOI, it says it's given as a web address, so it includes HTTPS, which we have. Um, it says in plain or colored and underlined text. So it could be either, let's be nice to our reader and go ahead and make this link live. So if they are um, reading or grading our assignment on the web, they can just go check our source very easily. One of the, the main points of citing our sources is to make life easier for our reader. They can go check out our sources if we want very easily. And so since we're trying to make life easier for our reader, let's just make that link life. And with just those few fixes, it looks like we have a very accurate, correct APA citation. And we're ready to uh, move on to our next citation. Make sure that you um, copy and paste all of your citations into ABC order by the first author's last name. So anything that starts A to L would go before this entry. Anything N through Z would go after. As always, if you have any questions while you're working on your references, contact a librarian. We would be happy to help.